Well, it's 1031. Um, I think we might have a couple more people heading this way. So I'll wait a moment. Okay, I think we'll get the meeting started. We have a select audience in person and online. And <laughs> so this is our next to the last meeting of this season. And next, next week will be the annual meeting at which Tony Estrada is going to talk about the beginnings of the uh, museum and, and what led up to his being so active in, in uh, getting that going. So today um, we have someone I think that you all know, Errol, going to present some of his, his photos from Arispe over the years and talk a bit about the, the project that and the show that he's doing there. So all oh. yours. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you very much, Joan, thank you. Before I share the screen, I wanted to uh, kind of show you um, an example of what I've been working on, if I can get it. But uh, for the last, uh, the last few weeks, I've been printing up pictures of the people of Orispe. Now, there will be over 400 pictures that will be displayed, but only uh, 30 or so will be that size. I want to thank all of you that are watching and that will be seeing this on YouTube. But I want to give a little background on Arispe Sonora. And I visited there on my very first trip to Arispe was actually in 1981. And I was prompted by a couple of things. And one of the prompts was a friend of mine had visited several of the churches along the Sonora River. And at about the same time, I saw an article in Sunset Magazine. Uh, I'm sure it's not published anymore, but what a great magazine that it was with excellent photography of the Southwest United States. And there was an article about the churches of Sonora and kind of emphasizing on the few uh, that were founded by Father Kino. So those two things together uh, in March, of 1981, I took off for Sonora. I crossed the border uh, at uh, Agua Prieta. I went down south to Moctezuma for the first night, went through some very interesting towns, then up uh, the second one to uh, Masukari, and then turned north, going through the beautiful towns of Bavia Cora, uh, Huaypac, Aconchi, um, you know, Banamichi, and eventually to Arispe. Uh, I'll show you the map here, and if you can follow the, my cursor there, but that's where we started. We went down this way from Teras. Uh, uh, Nakuzari is, is a very interesting place if you haven't been there. The town was made famous by a catastrophe which Jesus Garcia saved the town. Uh, he ended up losing his life a train full of dynamite was going to explode, but he was able to, to miss the town, keep it out. Uh, then on to uh, Moctezuma, uh, where, well, Kumpas is a beautiful place. Moctezuma, where I spent the night. My son was then about nine years old and we were together. We camped out along the river there. The next day went over and then up uh, you know, from the map here until we got to Arispe. Each little village, I went to the plaza, I went to the church, the churches were open, and uh, <clears throat> I was able to photograph inside the churches, outside the churches. The people were so friendly, uh, had some tacos that were delicious, and we got to Arispe at night, and I was just so impressed with that community and also happy because they had a, a, a hotel there. The next, I photographed in the afternoon and then in the morning in the East Bay. Then we went up to Cananea, then over to Imaris, down to Hermosillo for a couple of uh, nights and, and then back home. Uh, once I got back, um, I, as I, I was teaching photography, so I took some poster board and I put a couple of uh, uh, poster board, um, you know, displays showing the pictures and writing about them uh, from the trip. 
And these are some of the churches and some of the things that were there on the river. Uh, the picture here of the kids I'm going to talk about later. That turned out to be a special picture. Um, one of my Facebook friends talked to, was born in Chinapa. And I, when she, they had her birthday, I put a picture of the church, uh, which is right there of Chinapa. And uh, this is the Arispe Church. So anyway, I put that together and I thought, I've got to go back. Well, I didn't go back immediately, but over the years, I visited Arispe, Arispe somewhere between 10 and 15 times. And I guess the question is, why? Well, when you go to Arispe, the first thing that impresses you is the beautiful plaza in the center of town. Uh, it's unchanged. The clock still doesn't work. And, uh, but it's a, a place, a, it shows the community spirit. Uh, during day and night, there's always people around. I, I took this picture at a vacant time. And then when you go south, the upper picture in the right, if you go south uh, over to the river, you pass the farmland, you pass the corrals where they got horses and uh, other livestock. The bottom picture was after a rain. I took that in 1986, uh, looking north to the plaza. Those streets then were kind of dirt and sand, and now uh, the streets are, are all paved. Um, the name for Arispe will uh, take it a while. I'll put it in Spanish for some of my Spanish-speaking uh, friends who'll be watching it. Uh, but the, uh, re the region, um, there were a number of people of the indigenous Opata uh, tribe that lived there. And in um, the name Arispe, the people there in Arispe tell you that it's an Opata name. But I've, I've done a little research and I think I'm pretty sure it's a Basque word because in the Basque language, uh, aritz is, uh, signifies oak, roble, and pe is under. And if you've been to Arispe, under the oaks is a perfect description of the town. And of course, uh, there were many of the early uh, people from Spain that explored and settled the area, a number of them were Basque. So it's easy to, to know why that name uh, was there. Now, it became an official Spanish settlement uh, when uh, the Jesuit priest, Geronimo de la Canal, uh, started the town in 1646. And he began evangelizing among the people, and they started building the church there in town in 1653. Now, he was not uh, Geronimo. <laughs> Uh, Father Geronimo was not the first of the Spanish that probably went to Arispe. Uh, Marcos de Niza went explored much of Sonora in 1539, and there's a very good chance that he uh, entered that settlement there along the Sonora River. He was right in the area, but we don't know for certain if he did. In 1541, Coronado uh, was looking for his seven cities of gold is a Siete Ciudades de Cibola. And when he, he went all over Sonora, now he didn't establish any communities except one, which was near the current day Cocorit. And, but that what he established was later um, uh, destroyed by the Yaquis in an uprising. So it didn't become permanent. In 1776, Arispe became the capital, and the title was, it was the capital of the Comandancia, uh, Comandancia y Capitania General de las Provincias Internas. Now that is a very big sounding name, and, uh, and, it, and it should be because if you look at the map, all of this that is uh, pale in color there, orange, light orange, whatever, that those are the provincias in Ternas. It's as large as what Mexico is today. It includes the present day Sonora and Sinaloa. It inc included Nueva Vizcaya, which 
is the Presa de Durango and Chihuahua. Uh, the Californias all the way up to like Canada, uh, including the Baja. We have New Mexico, uh, you know, the area of New Mexico, uh, Nuevo Mexico, then uh, Texas, we had Texas, we had uh, the south of uh, Texas too, um, that uh, going to the Nueces uh, River. Uh, we had uh, the New Kingdom of Leon or um, uh, Nuevo, uh, let's see, I should have, oh, I should have the Spanish there. But, uh, but anyway, we've got the, uh, uh, the uh, Nuevo Reino de Leon and which is now uh, uh, Nuevo Leon and uh, Santander, which is south of that and uh, Tamal, uh, Tamaulipas, which is south of Texas, and, and then the current state of uh, Coahuila. All of that was the little town of Arispe, which today has 2,700 people. It was never very large, but it, was the, it has had such an influence over this area in Sonora over the years. Now, the church building, <coughs> Uh, as I mentioned, was started in 1653 and completed in 1675. And it was dedicated in 1783 by a gentleman we all know in Alamos, uh, Bishop Antonio de los Reyes, who started the church or was involved in the building of our current church building there in Alamos. Now, a little church history, you almost have to understand church history to know uh, about Sonora. In 1779, the Diocese of uh, Sinaloa and Sonora, well, and actually in the Californias, uh, was established. And in that diocese, of course, the headquarters was in the capital city of the, uh, um, you know, of the area, the internals. Um, and, the, uh, and the capital city was Arispe. Now, um, at this time, uh, Bishop uh, Antonio de los Reyes was in Spain, but in 1781, he came to Sonora. He stayed in Alamos. And there's kind of a joke. He, uh, the, he was supposed to have gone to uh, Arispe and to have stayed there, but the joke is that he looked around at Arispe and he kind of had in one hand Arispe, the other hand Alamos, and he said, I want to go back to Alamos. And he, he went back and, of course, started our church. Now, he intended the church in Alamos to become the cathedral, but actually the cathedral remained in Arispe until 1844 uh, when it was moved to Hermosillo. So the Alamos Church was never a cathedral. A few pictures of the church, uh, the outside, I mean, the church is the second thing that you photograph when you're there. It is, it is just simply beautiful. And uh, I hope when you visit Adis Bay uh, that the church will be open or that, that you can go uh, inside. Now, this is uh, the church and the community from a hill across the river uh, using a long lens and you can see the cemetery up at the top and the plaza is off over there to the left of that picture. Over the years, I photographed much within the church and this is a particularly uh, meaningful photograph to me because it was a Palm Sunday in 1990 and I, uh, wanted to get to the church early enough to get pictures of people as they were coming. And this lady and a couple of other uh, elderly uh, women were reading the catechism and praying in the church. And so I walked in and I uh, spoke to her and got permission to get her picture. And I, that picture has been displayed in so many places. And now the, the interesting aspect was I had an exhibit in 2006 in Hermosillo, and uh, it was, uh, you know, Las Partes Rurales de Sonora, and this was one of the pictures. 
And uh, I was interviewed by a, a television person and she said, that woman is my boyfriend's grandmother. And she actually was still living. She, uh, they took her to Hermosillo to see the exhibit. And when the exhibit came down, uh, I asked that her picture be given to the family. I hope that it was, but I, I haven't found a known. But then I met her son when I was in Arispe last month. More pictures, um, a lady going to the church inside from the balcony where the musicians are on either a Palm Sunday or an Easter Sunday. This was a Palm Sunday. And it's the church is the center of the, uh, you know, the cultural life, certainly the religious life of the community. And it is a great asset to Arispe. These were the musicians leading the music at a service in the 1990s. And I took this picture. The girl on the left is, um, I think it's uh, uh, Denise, I think it's Correa, Peralta Correa. And she's in California now, and we correspond through Facebook. And I photographed her as, as a student in junior high and all the way through. She has a business now in Cali Southern California, uh, a dog grooming business. Now, the result of all of these visits to Arispe were hundreds of pictures, because at, at that time, I would photograph and film. I would take the film back to Phoenix, process it. And then in my, my lab, my dark room, I would make prints of everything that I liked. Well, I ended up, uh, today I have like 400 pictures. Well, I've realized that at this point in my life, those pictures are not really important uh, to anyone other than me and the people who are photographed. So it's time for me to give back or give these pictures to the families. So that, that became the, uh, the mission that led to this project, which is still in the process. Now, when I was preparing a History Association meeting on, um, on the four capitals of Sonora, this was back in the fall of 2020, when I was preparing that meeting, I scanned a few of those pictures and put them on Facebook. And what amazed me was I would get 100 likes and a hundred shares from each of these pictures. They were going out everywhere to people that were connected to Arispe. And then suddenly I had 250 friend requests from people connected to Arispe, including the current mayor, Alma Medina. She's now Facebook friends and working with me on this project. And I joke that so many of my friends on Facebook, I really don't know who they are, but I enjoy seeing pictures of the first communions and the baptisms and the quinceañeras and the birthdays and all the other festivals that go along. Now to help me with the project, I uh, called upon two of my very good friends, Juan Casanova who's standing, has spoken to the History Association twice in the past few years on the history of photography in Sonora. He is now the director of the Cultural Institute uh, there in Hermosillo. To the left is Enrique Yescas, who's a publisher. Uh, he's involved in tourism in Sonora. Uh, he does calendars, he does everything. And he's been a part of our photo organization uh, really for, for 40 years. Uh, Inyesca, uh, um, Enrique and uh, Juan both encouraged me to pursue this and offered their help in different aspects of it. I visited Arispe on my way back from Alamos last month, and this is the mayor, Alma Medina, and I dropped off some of the larger pictures and about 400 of the 8 by 10s and I dropped them off there at the Cultural Center, and once I got those pictures out, uh, there, there was uh, just almost uh, excitement. It made me feel so good. And in fact, uh, I got uh, a tap on my shoulder from Enrique, who was there with me. And he said, we've got to get these pictures over to City Hall because everybody's getting on their cell phones and we're gonna have a crowd down here. So we'd better pack them up and move, which, which we did. Um, 
the oops well anyway the other picture was with uh, alma this is photographer tomas albarca and he's actually a peru uh enrique and then uh alma uh in that picture and we all talked about what how this might go how could we show the pictures and then give them back and we've settled on uh they're having a festival an agricultural festival uh the last week of may and so they're going to display the pictures a couple of weeks before the festival. I'll be there for the festival. Uh, we'll have kind of a ceremony there. I will have the 400 small pictures, which will be uh, placed upon the walls and displayed. And then I will have uh, between 30 and 40 larger images that will be uh, as an exhibition. But none of those pictures will leave Arispe. Either they will become uh, used by the city, or they will go back to the families. Uh, Tomas, anyway, took this picture of me when I was there, and here I am on the balcony outside of City Hall with uh, Enrique and Alma. I was ready to burst into song uh, there uh, uh, standing on the second floor. Now, I want to give a few pictures to show you what Arispe is like. And uh, first of all, there's the Sonora River. It's large at some times. It's small at other times. I've been there when it's just kind of a trickle. The people of Arispe complain the water is uh, polluted from the mine in Cananea. And in fact, there have been some serious problems with uh, water pollution over the years. Uh, the people of Arispe get their water from well water and not from the river, but the river water is very important for uh, agriculture and um, it's uh, also for, well, agriculture for irrigation, but also uh, for the animals, uh, livestock to drink. So it's a very important source. Uh, there's the river in the evening from on the other side. Uh, both of these pictures show are, are looking south, um, you know, with the river there. Uh, this, I was there in 1991 when spring rains unusually had uh, made the river uh, very wide, not deep, of course, it's never very deep. And I took that picture, which uh, has been exhibited in a lot of places and was kind of the keynote for that 2006 exhibit or a uh, uh, um, an important picture in that for publicity. And it's also hanging on my living room in our house there in Alamos, but it's a very special picture uh, to me. Uh, just south of Arispe, showing the, uh, the farmland and the mountains to, uh, to the south, uh, almost the same place in a black and white picture, uh, another uh, very similar uh, pick, you know, showing. And I remember that it has the feel of a small town. I grew up in a small town in Kansas, and, and it's one of my attractions to at East Bay, the friendliness of the people, the open area. Uh, my oldest daughter, our oldest daughter, went with me on one trip, and, uh, and she said, I, you know, I wish I had grown up in a town like this. And I said, it, it would have been nice. This is just outside of town. This is a, uh, an image that I took, uh, I think in 2004, when I took that picture, but it's a beautiful spot. They have an overlook and uh, you can see these pillars of, of the formation and it's probably less than three miles from the town. Now, the photographs of the people. The gentleman that left had a, had a store in Adise Bay. Uh, the store doesn't exist anymore, uh, but I took that picture in 1986, and it was one of those that I posted on Facebook, and his family responded to me. He had passed away several years ago, but they loved the picture, and I see it uh, being, it's been shown on Facebook on different uh, memorials to him, and, uh, but anyway, that was a picture. I walked into the shop. I saw the, uh, the spurs and the metalwork in the background and said, here's a picture and I took it. The gentleman uh, at the top on the right is Arturo Silva. And uh, he was the principal of the secondary school. 
And his wife is also a teacher and taught at the secondary school. In the 90s, he left Arise Bay and went to Hermosillo, where he worked with the, uh, the state uh, Department of Education. He's retired now. Uh, he's older even than I am, but retired in good health. And he maintains the home in Arise Bay, although he and his wife live uh, in Hermosillo. The two girls, well, that was the picture that I showed you, but it's an example of what I would do. I would walk around in early morning or late evening or and just walk around the town and take pictures. And all the kids would come up, you know, una foto, una foto, and I'd take their picture. At night in the plaza, uh, the people, the workers would come in and they would have a tecate and they all enjoyed being photographed. I'd make small talk with them. And uh, they, were, they were just eager to be included to see an outsider coming through and taking pictures of their community. And of course, the people, I wanted to show the life of the community, this little boy and riding a burro uh, out on his way to collect firewood, uh, the little baby following. Uh, so many images like that. This was an afternoon and evening picture uh, where a kid is riding his horse back into town. This is uh, uh, out. I hope the road looks just like this today. I don't know, but this is out south of town heading toward the river. Now, when I would post a picture like this, and this was just walking through town, people would be talking and uh, they you know, I'd ask him to take a picture. Uh, when these pictures appeared on Facebook, all of these questions came up. Who are this? Or who is this? Or who's the person on the left? And people would answer, it's so-and-so. If I go through all those comments, I could almost write captions uh, for all <laughs> of these pictures. This was in Sinoquipe, which is a little bit south of the East Bay. But it was during Semana Santa, so the schools weren't open and the kids were out there. And uh, so I photographed them. They were all so eager to be photographed. And uh, this was a picture anyway uh, in early morning. Actually, it's outside the church uh, there in Alamos of three kids. The girl on the left uh, now is in her 50s and her husband commented on the picture he, when I posted it on Facebook. And he said, this beautiful little girl is now my wife, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if they have grandchildren yet, but uh, she, you know, who knows? I took that picture in 1986. So she's gotta be in her fifties now. And then uh, the little girl, I'm not sure exactly what year I took that. Uh, on the left, the, uh, the little girl, uh, was there when I brought the pictures to a Bay last month. And she was searching through those eight by tens and finally found this picture. And so I made an enlargement. So that will be one of the exhibit pictures. And, uh, but that was her. When she held up the picture, I said, well, is that your daughter? No, it's me. It's, I'm the one. And then the gentleman on the right, the workers, uh, were, were so eager to be photographed. This gentleman, I took his picture and I talked with him and I couldn't understand too much of what he was saying, but I thought, well, that happens a lot when I'm speaking in Spanish, so uh, it didn't surprise me. But when I posted his picture, uh, a lot of people talked about that, um, like with dementia, he didn't make a lot of sense in his later years. And so maybe that was the reason I couldn't understand too much, but I loved, I, I loved the picture. Uh, the young men out there, um, uh, again, it's, uh, I love the, the way they're up against the wall with the uh, three of them have their, their legs up there, the, uh, the, uh, the pictures. Uh, the kids on the left are right out in front of the church. Uh, the girl on, um, the older girl on the right, she was carrying her eggs in a plastic bag. I thought, oh my, I, I, you know, it just seems so odd. But of course now I'll, in Alamos, I'll go down to the little shop in our uh, neighborhood and get some eggs and carry them in a plastic bag, uh, just like that. Uh, these kids were kind of fighting and 
uh, horsing around and they wanted to be photographed. So anyway, I took their picture in, in the back of the pickup and uh, she wanted to, to pose, uh, you know, maybe as, maybe had dreams of being a model. These kids were both out in, in front of the church one time and uh, took their picture. She was driving this little uh, car all around town, a little battery operated car. And I thought, well, she must want to be photographed because she kept going past me. So I stopped her and anyway, took the portrait uh, of her. Now, interesting story here. This picture was taken in 2002. The girl on the right is Gladys and she was maybe eight years old then. And it was just a picture. What I, I, I love the girl on the left and her expression. And of course the one in the center was shy and uh, do I wanna be photographed or not? But when I was there in Alamos in January, uh, I ran off some copies of material when we had our history association uh, tour of Bartolome School. And I gave everybody on that tour a handout of five or six pages. Well, I needed to know um, where I, I asked. In fact, I asked the Roar, Roar box, uh, Susan and Michael, because I knew they had run something off. And, and they gave me the, the shop and told me where it was that I could have copies made. And the girl on the right works there. She's from Maurice Bay. Uh, her name is Gladys Angelica, and she uh, recognized me immediately and even on her phone had that picture. And of course, I raced back to my house and found the picture and gave her a copy uh, so that she could have it. She's in her 20s now, such a sweet, uh, sweet gal, but really excited uh, by this project that I have. And her father is the chronista now. Uh, of Arispe. Uh, they had a, a lady for 50 years took the history of the town and she passed away maybe five years ago. And they recently had a tribute to her that appeared um, on publications anyway from the town. Three kids in town. Love this shot. Uh, uh, the boy and his, uh, his sister and his friend there, uh, you know, downtown in Arispe. This picture was 1981. Uh, workers, if someone was working stucco, I wanted to get a picture of it. Kids crossing the street. This is looking north. The plaza here is in the background. And this, uh, this kind of a scene, the, the dog, uh, the lazy dog, the two horses saddled up. Well, and at times you can see similar things in Alamos, but it's very common there in Arispe. This is the same street uh, a number of years later. Uh, this, this street was the old entrance to town. Uh, they've since got kind of a, a, a wider paved street. Well, this was paved then. Uh, but this street I took, uh, I went out one night doing, well, several nights doing night pictures. And this was one that I took. The schools, I wanna talk about the schools because when I came in 1987, the gentleman, uh, the Chinese gentleman at the bottom picture was a teacher in China and I took him to Sonora for five days. And he was interested in the schools especially. So we went to the elementary school. I got permission from the principal. We went to classes. I took uh, pictures of teachers and students. Then we went to the secondary school and you can see that picture in 1987. Uh, this is Mr. Silva in the center in the top picture. And we took pictures in schools. One of the pictures I took that year was part of an exhibit that appeared in Japan. It, it went to uh, three galleries sponsored by Canon um, in, in Tokyo, Osaka and Fukuoka, Japan. And the this picture was just, it, it didn't have a great significance to me at the time, but uh, the, uh, the exhibitors in Japan chose this to publicize the show. And I thought, wow, that is a special picture. And uh, so you can see the announcement of the exhibit uh, underneath the Arispe 
It's, uh, it's got Arispe, you know, landscapes and people. Uh, Hitobito is the, the people. And then under that, my name is there under photo exhibition. My name is there in Japanese. I'm known as Eruru Jimaman. So just, just <laughs> for interest's sake. But anyway, that picture was taken uh, when Shaolong Yu, who is at the right, was there. And that's uh, Mr. Silva. And he visited, talked to the students. Some of the teachers, both of these were elementary school teachers. The gentleman on the right, his daughter uh, writes to me uh, all the time. She has used that picture. Uh, rec he recently passed away. And, uh, you know, he was in his 80s, maybe early 90s. Uh, this picture was in, uh, it was a class held after school for students that were having trouble. And if you read it uh, in the Spanish, it's funny, but of course, the teacher was either trying to teach phonon uh, phonics or sounds or whatever. But if you read it, uh, number one, it says, you know, that is Pepe. And then Pepe grooms his duck or cleans his duck. Okay. <laughs> then it said, that duck steps on that toad. You know, I say, Pato Pisa, Ese Sapo. Okay. You wonder where is this going and what's it about? And, um, then it then it says you know Papa scares the toad and it goes on, but I love the picture uh, because the light was was going into her face from the open window and she's pointing the sticker and then up in the corner we have Xiao Long uh, writing in uh, you know Chinese uh, during that visit. These were secondary school teachers. The lady, the beautiful lady on the right, is uh, Mr. Silva's wife. And then I had pictures of students, uh, both secondary, elementary, when they were in the classroom. Um, I just walked around as they were listening to lessons, uh, photographing faces. Uh, this is Daniela. She was the one in the church there in the balcony. This is her as a uh, junior high student. And I hope that she'll be there for the big uh, display. Kindergarten class, uh, what a you know a, a great a great kid there with his uh, cowboy hat on, and that was part of the kindergarten there outside of the school. I saw her multiple times. She and her sister sold uh, uh, <clears throat> tortillas along the street, and when I would drive into town for several years, they were selling them. They would run after me because they knew they had an easy sale. I'd buy those delicious tortillas. The elementary school, the jump rope, uh, <clears throat> the boy there at left, I photographed several times over the years. Uh, the old typewriters, that's a, an old typewriter to the right um, of that girl. The um, elementary students taking notes, a girl presenting uh, something that were there. I want to talk a little about, anyway, the plaza. And um, this shows it. I've got pictures there that I showed of the plaza at night. But during the day, this was, um, I think, in the spring. Most of the times I visited Arispe were either January, February, or March. So this could have been a March picture. I did a lot of <laughs> night pictures, anyway, of, of the plaza. And often, you know, this just a few people there, but often uh, it was quite busy. Families would be there. This particular picture, when it appeared on Facebook, uh, I found out the gentleman standing to the left sent me a note. And uh, these were relatives of his that were visiting Arispe. And some were Arispe people and, and uh, others were not. Uh, kids there at the bench at night, um, you know, just uh, sitting there and I, uh, you know, <laughs> the boys on one side, the girls on the other, whatever the case, uh, just enjoying uh, being out there at night. And I look at the world today and everybody's looking at their phones and their tablets and how wonderful it was uh, those days when people went out and socialized at night. Another picture of the plaza. And uh, these two pictures that 
The top picture was with a long lens from the cemetery uh, looking down on uh, the bell tower. And then the other, uh, anyway, was a picture at night. Well, that's the end of the Arispe project. And I'm gonna stop the share. Anyway, I thought I'd mention, uh, I will be visiting at East Pay again in April and drop off some more pictures, uh, more display easels. And then uh, Carol and I will go back to at East Pay the last week of May. I don't have the details, but if any of you are free, come to at East Pay uh, on that last weekend and have a, a real party because we're, we're going to be celebrating. Any questions anybody has? Questions? <laughs> yes. So how do you repeat this? Yes, I will. But I was wondering, when you talked about the missionaries who were in the area in the 17th century, I think those were supposed to be in the 16th century, 15th century, 16th century. I was wondering what particular missionary Okay, I couldn't quite get it all. Okay, yeah, the question is about the missionaries that were there in the 15th, 16th, 17th centuries. Um, what uh, were they like Jesuits or? Okay, good point. Or, yeah, I'm glad, uh, Pam, that you asked that question because. The Jesuits were expelled from Sonora in 1769. Now, the early missionaries were all Jesuits, and Father Kino and all the big, they were Jesuits. But in 1769, for reasons that we ought to bring up at some point in a future meeting of the History Association, they were expelled, and then the Franciscans took over. And so uh, Antonio de los Reyes had to have been a Franciscan. Uh, our famous bishop, the first bishop of Sonora, because the Jesuits were no longer allowed here. And that was in the 18th century, in the, the uh, 1700s that it was there. But that's, that's uh, the subject of a program, the religious history. Um, Father Carpenter and I have talked at length, and I remember having a long discussion about why were the Jesuits expelled? And I thought it was because they became very political and uh, they were supportive of the indigenous against uh, the, uh, the colonial Spanish, but that was only part of it. There are a lot of other issues and Father Carpenter would be a good source and others to, because church history is such an important part of Sonoran history. And so that would be good. Yeah, anything else that anybody has? I don't know if. <laughs> yes, if Pam. We... I was wondering if you know, the first to work in black and white or color. Do you prefer to work in black and white or color? Well, in the old days, it was black and white because that was, um, I had a lab that, where I printed all the black and white. And um, I did, I shot a lot of color, but I would have it developed out and I love the printing myself, just as I do today with the computer. I love to make those prints. So uh, the black and white, up until the last roll of black and white I shot was 2005, and it was there in Alamos. And I'm ready. I bought two rolls of black and white film again, and I'm ready to uh, kind of revise and start once again. Uh, doing some black and white work, and of course, then scan it, and um, you know, and, and use the scans. Wonderful! I love the black and white. I just want to add that watching these pictures up here on the screen, I thought the aesthetic experience of black and white was superior to color. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say that. Could you hear that, Errol? Yeah, it was like the black and white, if I understand it, Pam, you know, has a feeling to it that color doesn't. Is that what you were saying, Pam? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I, I agree. And that's why now today I can take a picture. I can do a portrait of you guys and I can turn it. I can in Photoshop make it black and white, but it's not the same. It doesn't have the feel. It doesn't, it's not the same. You need the film to really show uh, that feeling of black and white. I think of the great Ansel Adams, uh, the great photographer who said that uh, when you looked at a color picture, it was like music, uh, a, a sheet of music that was slightly out of tune. And the black and white was the purity. Yeah. I, I've never forgotten that. And of course, Ansel Adams was a, a concert pianist, a musician, and I, I've never forgotten that. And I think it's true. There's something really pure about that black and white. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Well, I thank want to thank you. Thank you Very for coming. And I, uh, I will get this posted. I probably won't this afternoon. By the way, um, Kansas is playing in the national, uh, uh, the NCAA basketball tournament as we speak. So as soon as I close this out, I've got to see if they're winning or losing. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank you all and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll get it up okay. and let's get a big crowd yeah. for Tony next week. We have okay. one more question. Oh, one, one more. more. Is there somebody buried in that church in Bay? Some famous person? Is there somebody buried in that church in that East Bay? Oh. What a great question. Okay. The people of Arispe, when I first visited, told me that, father, that uh, uh, you know, um, Juan Bautista de Anza, that de Anza was buried oh. in the church. Now, that's another story because we all know about the Anza expedition. Certainly, you know about it, Joan. You've written and talked about it. But the de Anza expedition began in Culiacan. Uh, the people of Alamos became a part. It went up north, and Arispe was another major portion as they moved uh, north into what is now the United States. Um, and De Anza lived in Arispe, uh, was a part of that, and uh, he died there. Now, the question is, they had told me that he was buried in the church. But sometime in the 1990s, they, what is it, exhumed the body, and it was not De Anza. It couldn't have been. <laughs> uh, so, you know, <laughs> but of course, the people of Arispe, they also told me years ago that De Anza left from Arispe to go to San Francisco, and of course he didn't. But they thought for all those years that he was buried there. Very good <laughs> question, uh, because we now know now there 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 were a couple of skeletons there, but Danza was not one of them. Don't ask me how they figured all this out, DNA and everything else. Okay, if that's the last question, I'll go ahead and close it. And Joan, thank you so much, and Pam and all of you there, and I'll get it up and give you a notice when we got it uh, up on YouTube. Okay. Thank you, Errol. Sure. Okay, goodbye, goodbye.